G'day and welcome to another big edition of the RDFNL Footy Show. Thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. My name is Genji. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. We've got a massive round nine coming up in RDFNL Senior Footy. We do. There's quite a few matches that will have a big impact on the ladder with um, depending on how results fall. So I think we've got four of the top six playing each other and then we've got a couple of teams that are just outside the top six facing each other as well. So it's a very important round in the context of the season. Absolutely right there. And uh, I'm going to break through the other fourth wall here uh, for those... Uh, Thanks to our, uh, our our mate Pete over at uh, Sunbury Three and our GF, uh, FM Balls and All Sports on uh, on Saturday mornings. Uh, this in, this uh, this show gets replayed on the day, so a big good day to all those listening in on the uh, on the Saturday, which is, I think it's fantastic. It's great to uh, to have other uh, media organisations share it, much like our friends at uh, at Rupert's Wood as well, who um, who who share our show. And uh, Rupo TV is getting record hits, almost getting more than us at the moment. So I think we better lift our game a little bit. I know they're lucky they can get the content of the matches. Maybe a few players who who are watching back their goals from the weekends as well. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. So we thought we'll give those guys uh, a bit of a plug there before we rip into uh, the first lot of games. And uh, we've got Diggers Rest and Lansfield. Look, I think this, we were expecting a one-sided match here. You go, Diggers Rest has absolutely smashed these bottom sides. So for them, it's just about keeping doing what they've been doing. They've come in off their best performance of the season when they've knocked off Wallen. And so it's about having that four-quarter performance. And because they're getting a number of guys back into the side, it's about getting that match fitness back, match fitness into them and getting the continuity in the side. So they're starting to build and they're looking at like they'll hit their best form coming in, later in the season. And for Lansfield, what can we take out of them? Well, they've just got to keep... Obviously, we know that they... Are struggling this season they aren't paying players they're looking at to the future with a lot of local guys so it's just about making sure they're doing all the team things they've got their K- kpis they've set on the board it's not about the scoreboard for them it's about hitting the things they've set pre-game that they want to achieve looking forward to seeing who stands up for them this week and uh it's, it's a few players that we can look for look forward to watching in the back end of the season because uh, they've got a bit of talent there um but the, i guess the beauty is they're having different guys step up every week it is and it's a lot of their experienced guys as well looking i think it was Luke Malone, Matt Bat- Bowden, Chris Collins, those guys were the ones that were sort of strong last round. So that they're the ones you'd expect to stand up and they have been showing the, showing the way. One of the matches around, we've got the Surrey Kangaroos taking on Romsey. This is very interesting. You've obviously got, I think, um, Romsey's sitting seventh and Surrey Kangaroos are eighth, I think it is at the moment. But Romsey's played one less game. So that that's very important in the context of the season and looking for a top six spot. So... Both of these sides will be wanting to win to keep pressure on those top six sides, especially with some of those sides playing each other this week. You look, Romsey's coming off a really big win against um, Rockbank, where at the same time, Summary Kangaroos are coming off their best performance of the season, knocking off Wooden Heskett. So it's going to be quite an interesting match. And for both sides, it's very important in the run home. How does this one play out? Look, I'm going to go Romsey. I think Romsey has a little bit more depth. But if the Summary Kangaroos play the way they did last week, I can't see why they can't do that. Obviously, they are um, bloody and a lot of players that have been playing reserves previously are playing seniors so sometimes it's a mental thing if you get out then it, it doesn't matter who's on the park as long as you're focused in that you can't get the point sometimes i heard a stat sort of bandied around that from round one to round eight so there's probably uh, I've well and truly over a dozen players from the summary kangaroos lineup that have come in and out of the side it's been a big turnover it is definitely and you look at it, obviously one example of that is jamie cuff who had mm. retired at the end of last season and then decided he was going to play reserves to just have a run around and he's ended up playing seniors i know he missed a game injured a couple of weeks ago but came straight back in so that's sort of saying they are bringing those guys through so and you look why some of these guys have played a lot of reserves in recent years they have won three out of the four last um, reserves flags premiership so they, they have got a bit of experience in that side and a winning feeling as well so if they can do what they did last round then uh, they could quite easily get the win hopefully some of that success from the reserves sort of pushes up and i will be uh getting on the summary kangaroos bandwagon uh, this week i think they've got a lot of uh, potential to to go back to back uh, a game that i cannot wait to go down and check out we've got Wallen and Wooden Heskett. This is very interesting. You've got two sides coming off losses, two sides that were probably disappointed with their losses as well. So, And probably the way they played. Obviously, you, you can take a loss if you played well and think, yep, we could have done this quite easily. But both were probably disappointed. Wallen was flattered on the scoreboard while Wooden Heskett they, they had their chances against Sunbury. They got back to within four points, but in the end couldn't get over the line. And Sunbury actually, I think, control was the better team across the four quarters. So both sides will be looking to get that uh, win. To, and also for ladder position, you've got you've got Wallen, who is sitting second, but you've got Macedon right on the tail. Stiggers Rest is right on the tail. So they drop a game. They could see them drop out of the top two quite quickly. Where Wooden Heskett's now slipped, I think they're down to fifth or sixth. 
they drop another match and then you've got Rumsey and Sunbury Kangaroos right on their tail and they're back in the pack. Yeah, it does make things interesting in that respect because particularly a, a loss to would end, uh, a loss for would end Heskett would be hard because we do have Rumsey and Sunbury Kangaroos playing and they're the ones sort of jostling for that position. Exactly, and Rumsey's played one less game as well. Obviously, they still do have to play Diggers Rest in that yeah. match, which will be a tough one and no, by, no means it, it is a certain win. But it, just say they win this week and they pick that one up, they're right back in there and it, it could knock would end out of that top six so it's a vital match for both teams. Hawks a chance in this one? They are but I think Wollan will bounce back especially up at Wollan as well yeah, so it's yeah. always pretty tough up there but then we know um, Wooden they were pretty good against um, Rupert's Wood without getting the win and they knocked off Diggers Rest so they have played well against those, those good sides so I'm not discounting them but I will go tip in Wollan. Yeah I'll, I'll tip Wollan on that one as well. I, I can't remember the last time the Hawks actually won a Green Hill Reserve either so I think it's been a bit of a, a long stretch between drinks. Uh, Mountain Central's and Broadford um, Look, a big chance here for the Centrals. It is, and, and this is for them to keep in top with, mm. touch with that top six as well. I think they're only percentage behind Sunbury Kangaroos, so there's not much difference there. And with the two sides above them playing each other, it keeps them in the mix. You'd expect them to have a big win. They had a big win against Lancefield. They had a big win against Rockbank, so they have absolutely smashed those bottom sides, so I'm expecting that again this week. And uh, Dylan Weir? If, uh, if he's fit and firing, um, could he get back to some mean form? Because he didn't kick a goal last weekend. Well, he doesn't necessarily have to be fit. He wasn't well yeah. when he kicked 19 a few weeks ago. So just depends. If they can get it down to him, that's the key. You have got a key target down there who can kick bags of goals. He's shown, it's not well, while he kicked 19 a couple of weeks ago, he's kicked a couple of bags of five, that he is a key target down there in any condition. So you get it to him and that's it. Central's best shot of getting the win. Yeah, I think, and I think important for Central's as well is that not discrediting uh, Broadford, but if Centrals can find other avenues to goals as well, this might be the game to sort of do that, particularly if they uh, they want to play finals. Look, you, you do that. And look, speaking with Masset and Coach Ben Tankett last week, he said their pressure from Masset and from Malton was intense. So they're putting the pressure on the players. They've stepped out up that next level. It's about getting the wins against some of those top sides now and closing that gap. So, in, in, But in that process, it's also beating these bottom sides, which they've done so far. Hopefully a big win for Broadford this weekend would ensure that they've got all sides on the paddock. I think that'd be fantastic and anything else is a bonus for them. And uh, I know they're under nine and a halves. They are flying. They will play finals. A lot of exciting talent in there. I'd be interested to see as the season progresses, how many of those under nine and a half players who actually push into the seniors and, and have a bit of a run around for experience? Look, you'll give a few of them, but at the same time, you want to juggle. You don't want to. You don't want to um, curtail these players and obviously go come into seniors to get smashed every week. It, it, it dents the morale, and that's something that Broadford is juggling. And I, I know when I spoke to Skip Ray after interleague, he said that that's the biggest thing. It's, it's about juggling that morale. They want to give these younger guys the experience, but at the same time, they don't want them seen, being smashed every single week. That they don't want to be around the club. Riddle V Broadford. I mean, sorry, Riddle V uh, Rupo. This one has been one of the most interesting matches across the last three, four years. Yeah. Not just this round. It, it is, and these two have sort of built up a good rivalry. And both into the match on really, really good form. They're both um, coming off some big matches. And Riddle has been dominant um, in their last few performances. I think they've um, had close to 300 point wins in the last um, weeks. I'm not sure how many they won by yeah. Romsey, but they could have quite easily won by the 100 points. I think Romsey kicked a couple late though, but yeah. you look at that, and then you've got Rupertswood who, besides their loss to Wallen, which they only just lost, and they were still missing several players, you go, it's quite a, it's going to be a quite interesting match, and you probably see where Riddle is now at. They struggled early on, but now playing one of these top sides, you see where they sort of compare and where they sort of rank at this time of the season. We know how Rupert's would have been, uh, how, how well they've been going already this year. Uh, Riddle have sort of, again, slow start, getting, getting, to, uh, getting some great form now. Are the Bombers a chance? Well, they are always a chance in these matches. I think Rupert's will, will be too strong and get the win. But you go, the way Riddle's played the last couple of weeks, you can't discard them. Uh, they destroyed Romsey, and we thought that was going to be match of the round. I know we were both at yeah. that match, and we're shocked at the at the scoreline in the end. So you've got that. You can't discard them the way they're playing. You've obviously got Hayden Ross is in really good form. Dylan Tarkson starting to warm up. And they've got a lot They've got a lot of players and a lot of different options. But I think Rupert's Woods just has too much depth across the ground. Looking forward to seeing how Nick Grigg goes against some, uh, some really good Backman and be interested to see who uh, I'd imagine he'll be lining up on Timmy Walsh, um, who's uh, an outstanding backman in his own right, and, and, and how the Bombers use Ben Sonigan as well. And it is, and you look, obviously you go um, Nick Grigg will go down there to full four, but you've got who goes in Nick Grigg, 
who goes on top, Podolzac. Yeah. You, at the same time, Grig sort of frees up Podolzac a bit. So they're going to have to find not one but two key defenders, whether Ben Sonic and is that other one to try and shut down Todd. As we know, he's been he's been really, really good this season. I think there's only one poor game that he's had for the year, and that was the Wollongong game. So y- you have to look to shut down him too. So whether you've got Sonic and goes to him or Sonic and might go to Grig, and then you've got Timmy Walsh go to Todd to- to- Podolzac. You've got two key decisions to make down there. And whether, I don't know, whether Braden Allen makes himself available or Jason Allen makes himself available for a game like this. Uh, I don't know what their movements are personally, but if you had them in the team, then they could probably push back into that role and maybe free Sonigan to run further up the field. Well, that's it. They've got a lot of they've got a lot of decisions to make. They have spotted a lot of players through the side again. Mm. So they have seen what different players can do and they might even throw a surprise and throw um, different players onto those two guys. Maybe the great man, Dylan Tarkson. To throw him down back because he can do the job. I think I think they'll use him up forward and up midfield. He's a little bit more yeah. more destructive <laughs> down there. So I think you don't want to take that away from their game. It really helps their, them and get getting forward. Yeah, I, I, he should be getting fined for all these mentions too every time he gets pumped up. So for those uh, watching the social media, get on to him. Money, money, money. As we talk on the, the, the final game, we've got uh, Rock Bank and Macedon. Well, this is going to be an interesting one. Obviously, Macedon are queer favourites going into this game, but I think they had a super few saw boys after the game with Mouse and Central, so whether they look to rest a couple of guys, give them a bit of a break, is something that might come into contention here and get some of those younger guys um, more opportunity. Obviously, I mentioned earlier in the week, Patrick Doyle, Sax Medley, they were best on ground and they're two of the young, against Mouse and Central, and they're two of the younger guys, so they're likely to get more opportunities in the midfield. I know they are expecting to get a few players back in the next few weeks, like Matthew Dick, Casey Sunnable, Sumable, um, Jack Mills, Jack Kernan, so they've still got a few guys to come back in, whether they bring them back this week or they hold off another week and give them a break that's still to be decided for Rock Bank it's about just making sure they're competitive and hitting their KPIs they'll continue to throw players around try them in new positions and see whether they can find a player or two heading into next season they go yep there's a new role for them they'll work really well in that next season I wouldn't be surprised um at least in the reserves, that uh, the Rams can walk away with a victory there because they've, uh, they've still got a few good players floating around. With Macedon's death has been tested at times. It is, and if they rest players, then that is something their death will, depth will be tested there. Whether you bring up a few 19s into the reserves, not sure there. But yeah, the Rams definitely have still got some players in 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 the reserves. Their problem has been players in and out of the seniors, which yep. then does hurt the reserves. So I think they've sometimes some weeks they've had seven or eight players in and out of the side, and that doesn't help either side. So yeah. they can get those if they. <laughs> can get those players back on the park in the senior side and then that flows onto the reserves and the reserves will be a good shot there. Absolutely right. Well, thanks to our friends at On Time Delivery Solutions. Thanks to you, Tara, for uh, for joining us and uh, make sure you check out Rupo TV. It is one of the hottest uh, t- uh, shows on the uh, on the market from uh, Clubland. And uh, guys, we look forward to catching up with you next week. Thanks for having me.